Hello, Algebra 2B Cougar Academy folks. This is lesson 5.3. Um, how do you rewrite expressions by completing the square? Um, it is a new strategy, so something brand new, um, that we're going to use to solve equations of quadratics by completing the square here. So the main thing with this is to remember that standard form of a quadratic is ax squared plus bx plus c. This is what we call standard form of quadratic equations. Standard form. Okay. Um, a, b, and c are all coefficients. Um, a always goes with the x squared. Okay. Um, so in this first number here, it's number one. Um, b always goes with the x. So in this case, it's two. And c is always by itself. We call that the constant. It's also the y-intercept. Um, anyway, um, this whole idea of completing the square, we're going to be rewriting this quadratic um, and filling in this gap here. How we fill in this gap, okay, the little strategy here, and this is the main takeaway for today, is we do a process. We're going to take the b value, the b value, we're going to divide it by 2, b over 2, and we are going to square it. b over 2 squared, b divided by 2 squared, okay? so. Um, for this first problem here, 2 is our b value. Um, if we use this little property, um, 2 divided by 2, and we square it, that means we get 1 squared, which is 1, and that's what we're going to add here. Okay. Now, there's a little more to it, so let's look at what this now can be. If we were to now factor, so step 1, find that missing value. Step 2 is to factor. Let's remember m squared plus 2m plus 1. Thinking of factors of 1 that add to 2. Well, there's only two of them, positive 1 and positive 1. Meaning our factors are m plus 1 and m plus 1. And this whole idea of completing the square is we want that to be the case. We want to have these same two factors. That way we can rewrite it as m plus 1 the quantity squared. Completing the square, we are looking to get our final result to this. Okay, so um, let's just look at another example and follow those same steps. Um, number 2, x squared plus 40x plus 1. Uh, b over 2 squared, that's our first step. b over 2 squared. Boom, step 1. So 40 divided by 2 squared. And you could do this in one step in your calculator. You could think, well, I know that's just 20 squared, and 20 squared is 2 or 400. Okay. And then from here, um, you can think, well, if I were to factor this, um, x squared, so factors of 400 that add to 40, are both 20 and 20. So really, we have x plus 20 and x plus 20, and you can write it as x plus 20 squared. Boom, 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 boom. That's it. So b over 2. Little hint, little shortcut. When you take that b over 2, boop, boop, that is the number that's going to be right there. So that could be a little trick for you in the future, OK? Um, it does depend if this is positive or negative. So we'll see some others of that here. Uh, number three, so x squared plus 26 plus x. Maybe pause the video, see if you can get it. I'm just going to do it on my own. B over 2 squared. And 169 should go in your C value, okay? Which means we can rewrite this as um, x plus 13, x plus 13, boop, boop, or x plus 13 squared. Boom, 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 boom. Pat yourself on the back if you got that. If you're still a little confused, just keep trying to practice. B over 2 squared, and plug that in, and then rewrite. The B value, again, is what's going there, okay? Um, here is just a subtraction example, 
Okay, so same process. Don't let it scare you. Um, uh, really, negative 28 over 2. When you square it, yes, you get negative 14 squared. Also, um, look here. Uh, make sure that you are putting in parentheses all your square roots. If you're choosing to do it in your calculator, make sure you put everything in parentheses. It makes a little difference. Um, so here we get 14 squared, which is 196, positive, and that's what we add here. Now, with subtraction, just remember, um, for this to be positive and this to be negative, then both of our factors would have to be negative. So really we're looking at a minus 14 and a minus 14 or a minus 14 squared. So the other little trick is, well, if it's minus, it's going to be minus inside your final answer. Okay, um, so four. Five, same old idea. 42 over two squared, bada bing, bada boom, 21 squared. Oh my, we're getting some big numbers here. Um, again, you could do these in your calculator if, if you're scared, it's okay. 441, wow. Okay, um, really, that's just going to end up being so that's interesting. Are you sure it's 441? 21 squared? Yeah, okay. Um, so really it'll just end up being x plus 21. x plus 21. You could skip this step if you want. I do want you writing it as x plus 21 squared. It'll help you in the near future when we get to solving. So coming up shortly. Uh, last example. You could try it on your own again. I'm going to fly through it. Let's see, negative 9 squared, 81, and x minus 9 squared. Did you get that? Okay, if you didn't, just look back at what we just did. Um, negative 9 squared, positive 81, um, factors of 81, so negative 19, or negative 9, negative 9, those add negative 18. Gotcha. All right. Now, so why completing the square? Why does that help us? <clears throat> um, that helps us solve quadratics now. Okay, um, so solve each equation by completing the square. Uh, these, I believe, are already, um, actually not already set up for us. So um, let's just begin first by getting it into the format so that we can complete the square. So a little bit different than other problems. First, we want to move any extra stuff over. So we're actually going to add this to the other side, plus 36, plus 36. Okay, here's how I would recommend writing it. So we have x squared plus 16x, leave a gap here, plus something. Okay, we're gonna eventually be completing the square equals 36. Okay, we just move that over there. When we have this plus something, we're gonna fill that in with our b over 2 squared value. Okay, so now um, 16 over 2 squared, well that's 8 squared, um, which is 64. So we're going to add 64. Now with mathematics, if we add 64 to the left, we also need to add it to the right. So whatever you do, we're going to add both sides. So step one, um, move the C value for the time being. Two, complete the square. And three, add the new C value to both sides. So here and here. Now, um, this left side, okay, um, we just did that whole process. The whole idea of completing the square is so that we can rewrite this now. Um, so we could rewrite that as x plus 8 squared. That's the whole completing the square idea. On the right hand side we have 36 plus 64 which is 100, how convenient. And now at this point, why we can solve this, why it's nice, is we could take the square root of each side. So um, step four, um, rewrite as the 
um, completed square version. I'd say step five now is to square root both sides. So square root, don't forget plus or minus. A lot of you were forgetting plus or minus on some of the practice. So don't forget that. Um, we're going to square root x plus 8 squared. And square root 100. When you do that, it's just plus or minus 10 on the right. Um, equals, and the nice thing is, really, the 2 and the square root cancel each other out. So we just have x plus 8. And now we end up with two statements. So um, to solve for x still, we're going to subtract 8. And it's going to look funky because we have two different things. So really, we have x is equal to negative 8 plus 10 or negative 8 minus 10. You split up into two parts. So as you can see, this part is starting to get a little trickier, but none of the math really is anything too taxing, I don't think. x equals 2 or x equals negative 18. And those are your answers. You need two answers for most of these, okay? I'm splitting into two and solving. Okay, so let's look at a few more examples of those. They take a little bit of practice and a little bit of time, but I know you can handle them, okay? Um, so, eight here. Step one, we're going to move this negative eight over. Um, so we're going to have r squared plus 16r plus, I don't know just yet, um, equals positive 8, because we add 8 to each side. Okay. Next step, we need to complete the square. So 16 over 2 squared, hey, it comes out to be the same thing as the other problem. We're going to add 64 to each side. Adding 64, that means we can transform this into x plus 8 squared. And on the right-hand side, we have 8 plus 64, 72. Okay. Um, next step is square root. So we can square root both sides. Don't forget plus or minus. Plus or minus root 72. And that's equal to x plus 8. At this point, what you should try to do if, so we didn't get a perfect square this time, bummer. But here's where your square root stuff comes into play. Square root of 72, you want to simplify. Okay, so that is square root of 36 times 2. So we have plus or minus 6 roots of 2. And the last step, okay, um, there's actually a little less work involved if you get an irrational number. Remember, those are irrational those are the square roots, um, is subtract the 8, and it goes before the plus or minus. Really, we have x is equal to negative 8 plus or minus 6 roots of 2. That is your final answer. So a little bit of everything in there, um, some little curveballs, some things to pay attention to. Um, I do expect that you're simplifying everything and you're adding over um, the negative 8, and you can leave that as your answer. You don't need to split it up because it doesn't come out to be nice numbers for us, okay? So that's an irrational example. Um, number nine here, okay? Um, so step one, subtract, whoops, subtract that 63. So negative 53 is equal to n squared minus 4n plus, I don't know, and we are going to add that to the other side too. Find this missing value. That is negative 4 over 2 squared. Okay, doing the B thing. Um, so that's just positive 4. And add 4 to each side. So now it's negative 49 is equal to, we can transform this, and minus 2 squared. Okay, if I'm going too fast, pause, go back, recognize this is completed. So we could factor it and rewrite, okay? Um, next, square root both sides. So boom, boom, don't forget plus or minus. Plus or minus root negative 49 is equal to n minus 2. Ding, 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 here is, this is a light bulb. 
imaginary square roots. So all these things, here's an imaginary example. Um, remember, this is i, and square roots of 49 is really 7. So we have plus or minus 7i, and then equals n minus 2. And we'll add 2 to both sides, and really we're left with 2 plus or minus 7 I. You can't do anything extra with that. It's just a regular um, complex number. Okay? So that's a complex number example. Imaginaries. Okay? And our last example, okay, if you want to pause and try it, see how you get, or see if you get it, uh, you certainly can. I believe we'll get another negative. So let's see. Subtract 30. So negative 24. B squared, I don't know, plus, I don't know. What is that value? How do we find it? B over 2 squared. Okay, so 6 over 2 squared, um, that's going to be 9. Add that to both sides. Transformers, we can transform this. Uh, X plus 3 squared. Okay, equals uh, negative 15. Negative 24 plus 9. Yes. Okay, um, if you're here, awesome. Just now you can square root. Square root plus or minus. Don't forget plus or minus. Plus or minus root negative 15 um, is equal to x plus 3. Clean up this stuff. Okay, we don't like negatives inside the square root. So i is coming out. Square root of 15 does not break down any, so we're going to leave it there. Um, plus or minus is equal to x plus 3. And the last step, subtract 3, and it's x equals negative 3 plus or minus i roots 15. That negative 3, again, when you subtract it, it's going before the plus or minus. That is your answer, okay? So a little bit of new things thrown in here. Take your time, definitely practice these. Um, look online for some extra help if you need to. Um, there's a lot of good resources. Um, always reach out to me if you need more practice problems too. Um, but great job completing the square. Um, submit your notes, submit your practice, and good stuff guys, thanks.